At 5 or 6 a.m., depending on the seasons, Fajr Salah has arrived and is on its way to soon expiring. Within a hundred minutes, an hour and a half. In that hour, a small blessed group of Muslims pull themselves out of bed, they wash up, head out to the masjid perhaps, remembering Allah Azza wa Jal, making tasbih, perhaps using the siwak from the prophetic example, until they arrive at these homes that Allah erected, the houses of Allah fi buyutin adhin Allahu an turfa'a wa yudhkara fi hasmu. Houses He permitted that they be erected for the mention of His name, and they say and they mean Allah is bigger than everything in my life. Allahu Akbar. Whereas the massive majority of the ummah in that hour is asleep in their beds. And if there is in a home a mother or a father or both that pray, most likely the older children at the same time are still sleeping in their beds. Fajr time has now expired. The Fajr is over. And now it's time for school or work. All of a sudden, the house bursts with life, bursts with activity. The alarms are going off like they're sirens, like people have to run for the bomb shelters, and the hallways get crowded, make lines in front of your bathrooms. And even if you go to Muslim countries, even the streets will tell this story. A moment ago, an hour ago, they were silent graveyards. All of a sudden, they're buzzing. Traffic in the streets and people cutting each other off and honking horns and there's coffee lines. These two hours tell a great deal of the story about the condition of the Muslims with regards to their deen. You know, there are many parents out there, many mothers and many fathers that wish that their child, their children pray Fajr on time. But that's it. It's just a wish. It stops there. If it doesn't happen, nothing changes. But if you compare it on the other hand, if your child were a few minutes late for work or school, what takes place? Immediately. The tensions rise and you storm over to their bed and you say and you do whatever is necessary to make sure this child gets there on time. Question, is it wrong for people to be concerned with their jobs, their careers? Is it wrong to be protective of your child's degree and his, and his future? Absolutely not. In fact, it's undeniably Islamic that you consider it wrong to be a burden on society by choice, right? It is absolutely wrong for you to be a burden on the people. That is clear. But how can it be, can it ever be acceptable that our work, our career, our schooling that leads up to it, our educations is greater in our lives than Salatul Fajr? I'm not talking about Salatul Jama'ah, praying in congregation. I'm talking about what has never been debated in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam as an obligation for the past 1500 years. I'm talking about the, the super foundation of Islam. I'm talking about what every single scholar in this Ummah bar none. There is no scholar you will ever find among humanity or even in the jinn that has said it is permissible for you to leave Salatul Fajr until its time expires if it's in your hands. If you can do anything about it. So long as you're conscious and you're not a woman who's on menses or postpartum, there's a time for Salah, it cannot be deferred beyond it. As a matter of fact, Ibn Hazm and Ibn Al-Qayyim say all the scholars of Islam will also agree that missing a prayer deliberately until its mandatory time expires is the greatest sin by ijma' by unanimous agreement, greater than murder, greater than drinking wine, greater than zina, greater than cruelty to your parents. Do we see it that way? In fact, the only thing they debated over is whether or not leaving salah, giving up salah like this, or certain forms of giving up salah, whether they invalidate your Islam or not. And so after knowing that, please just imagine the scene with me. Imagine what we do. You get up in the morning if you pray Fajr and you tell your son, Fulan, Habibi, Beta, whatever, Salah, if we do that much. Come on, Salah, Allah yahdeek, may Allah guide you, get up. And that's it. You walk on, cool, free of conscience, no guilt, and you go on with your own personal life. And then an hour later, when it's time for school or it's time for them to get to their job, you come in irate, you come in angry, and the atmosphere gets hostile, and you make sure they have to get there. You know, or as a result of this, I, I live a generation, 
and even those in the generation before me, we have people now everywhere that say openly, I have not prayed Fajr on time in 10 years. I pray Fajr before I go to work, whenever I get up. Have your children ask their friends anonymously, how many of you pray Fajr on time? You will find that none of them do. Or maybe one of them or two, perhaps that his parents are on top of their case. Or his blessed wife, perhaps, is relentless telling him, if you don't get your act together, if you don't start making salah, we, this relationship can't continue, so he pulls himself out of bed. We have people that, say, I, people that set the alarm for work. They set the alarm for school. They don't set up the alarm whatsoever for Salatul Fajr. What does that say about our commitment to this deen? How could, it, how could this happen? Wallahi, this is betrayal of our children. Betrayal of ourselves. Betrayal. Wallahi, I can't find another word for it. When you, with that behavior, you tell them, put all your marbles in this. This is what's important. And so later on, when they try to adopt a new habit of salah, it's hard. Or they feel that this is what matters. This is success. And this that you keep pointing at with your behavior, with your protectiveness of, this could end at any moment. It could be impossible, worldly success. It could be taken in an instant. And yet they banked on it. Something that can vanish in an instant. How? How could it be that our school, which is the roadway to our career, became more important, greater in our eyes than Amudul Islam. The Prophet ﷺ called it that, the central column of Islam, because it is that which your Islam collapses without. How could it be that my start time at work, which determines the impression I put on my boss, how my boss looks at me, is more important to me than the pillar of Islam that without it, I could be disqualifying myself from Islam. How could it be that my sadness when my pay is docked at work for not showing up, for not signing in, for not giving it the due time that, it, that is expected of me, not meeting expectations, how could my sadness for being at loss with my money, being docked in my pay, be greater than my sadness when I miss Fajr one day? This is a very painful comparison that we need to make because it reveals to us that in reality, our dunya has become greater in our hearts than our deen. Whereas Salatul Fajr, that hour of Fajr, this is the most honest hour. Because it will honestly answer that question. Is dunya, worldly gain, more of a priority for me than deen?